Hi, it's James Sims here from James Sims Effects, and today I'm going to be presenting my first tutorial. Please bear with me, uh, I might make a few mistakes, but I'll try my best not to. Due to a large number of requests, today I'm going to be showing behind the scenes on how I created the Dancing Slabs video. Um, if, any, if you haven't seen it, I'll quickly play it here. The concept behind the video is using sound data to drive an element 3D animation. The, uh, it's actually pretty simple to do, so let's jump straight in. Okay, so to start, we're going to have to get some raw footage. As you can see, this is my footage here. It's quite long, so I'm going to cut it down to like four seconds here and trim the comp. Um, as you can see, while filming, I put some tracking markers down to help track the shot, so I would definitely advise doing that. Now, um, you might want to do some enhancements to your shot, like increase the contrast um, to help the tracker track the uh, shot. But once you're ready, I'm going to use the built-in camera tracker here in After Effects CS6 to start motion tracking the shot. Um, now, I will warn you, to create this effect, you're going to need Element 3D, of course, and we'll be using trap code sound keys to create uh, values out of the sound data so you'll need that otherwise you won't be able to create the effect um, now what I'm going to do is as this is taking some time I'm just going to skip ahead right now the camera tracker is finished and we got our shot tracked here so we can scrub through that's looking pretty nice now what we're going to do is, the first slab we composite, we're going to do it right in the middle here. So what we want to do is we're going to hold, click and hold control and select the four corners of this slab here. And then we're just going to click the uh, points on these tracking markers here. Not needed that much but they'll just help out a bit. Now we're going to right click and click create seven nulls and a camera. So that's done. As you can see our nulls are here but they're really small. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to normalise the scene and position this centre point here in the centre of our world. Um, this is seen in Andrew Kramer's 131st tutorial called the 3D Truck Composite. Uh, you might want to watch that, he goes into it a bit more detail than me. So, um, But I'll basically show you the overview of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new null and make it a 3D layer here and as you can see we positioned it in the center of our world 960 by 540 and 0 on the Z, Z space now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a top view here and as you can see these four corners are where our slab is going to be now we want our slab to be in the center of the scene to make it as easy as possible to composite so we're going to scale this null down to bring all the nulls closer get down a bit more and then we're going to drag it back and center it if you turn on the title action safe you can see it's a bit better and uh, move it over on the X a little and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our left view and what we want to do is we want to line all these nulls up parallel to this center line here so our scene will be flat to the floor so we're going to hit R to bring the rotation up and we're going to slightly rotate on the X axis and then we're going to drag the null up here and then have a look it also help if you select all the nulls hit S and scale them up so we can really see them a bit better um, I'm not going to do this too perfectly because like I say I'm just showing you the main concept behind creating the effect but, um, whoops. it's looking alright and then we're going to go to the front view and uh, it's looking alright so we click back to our active camera and here we are back in the scene so um, I'm going to turn the title action safe off and then I'm going to delete this null 
and shut off all these other nulls here. Right, so now we're going to have to make a new layer and this is when all the element starts happening. We'll call this layer element and apply the element plugin effect here. Go to the scene setup. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to make a slab either using After Effects and using Extrusion in Element or in Cinema 4D or 3ds Max, whatever you want. I've already created my slab here so I'll just bring that in. It's really simple, just box with a slightly larger box on top. It could easily be created in After Effects but I made mine in Max just because it's a bit easier. Um, ignore that, that's it's a bit of error when I made my model. Basically, but we have the top bit and the bottom bit there and I made them separate materials so we can texture them how we wish after uh, we're going to make sure this is in group 1 and click OK now as you can see it comes in pretty big but we'll go into the particle look here and scale it right down maybe about 4 and now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new null once again make it 3D and select all the camera and the nulls and parent it to this null and basically what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the weld around the box so the box lines up to the slabs we could just go into element and we could just rotate the box how we need to fit the slabs but I prefer to rotate the weld because it just makes life a little bit easier so and we can also position it a bit better too as you can see, um, let's make the box a bit bigger. Right now, what we're going to do is we are going to go back into Element and we are going to get the plane which comes with Element, and we're going to go and put that in on Group Five here. Click OK. Um, my bad, one mistake here. Go to slab 1 and make sure the anchor point is set to the bottom of the model here. So we click OK and that's done there. Now um, as you can see the plane is at the very bottom of our box because we've set the anchor point to the bottom and we're going to use this plane as our shadow map material to cut the bottom of the box off as it goes into the floor. So we just turn the matte shadow, wait before we do that let's make it slightly larger because we don't want to see the box poke through the bottom of the the layer there and um, we're going to material here and select matte shadow click OK and now what this will do is it will when we move our box down into the floor it will cut it off like it is actually going into the floor and just notice how off our box is so we'll fix it up I'm not going to go too perfect because I'm just showing you the main concept, but that's looking alright. If you go into the render settings and turn the ambient occlusion on, that helps a bit. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lower our box as far into the floor as we can without it disappearing. Now as you can see, we, we haven't lined up exactly perfectly, so we'll fine tune the rotation and position of the box in here. So, uh, just want to get it roughly, roughly right. That'll do for the tutorial sake. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the scene setup, and we're going to right-click on our slab and click duplicate model. Then we're going to rename this to slab two. Click OK. And um, I'm just going to quickly drag one of the preset materials on here so you can see this box is a different colour now. And we're going to get this slab and put into group 2 so it's separate from our first slab and click OK. Uh, as you can see it comes in really big but what we're going to do is we're going to go copy and paste group from number 1 and paste it onto group 2. So now our second box is in the exact same position, size and rotation of our first slab. But now, we're going to raise this slab as high as we can out the floor 
until it before it leaves the floor so about there okay and now we're going to move on to extracting the data from the sound file we have using trap code sound keys so we're going to go new solid and call it sound keys okay and I like to put it at the bottom of my comp so it's separate from everything else and then we need to bring our sound file in I'm using this song called Latin Industries from Incompetech.com uh, here's the waveform um, yeah so in sound keys we're going to well first we'll get the, the plugin on there and select our sound file as the audio layer so now this is going to be the layer that all the sound data is going to come from if we quickly solo this layer we can see different frequencies on this equalizer of our sound file so what we're going to do is I want the slab to move up and down according to this bar here so we're going to get the bottom of the frequency and the top one and we're going to put it there and scale it down so now that bar on the right here shows us the output that the sound's going to give us so it's looking pretty nice so what we'll do is we click apply and what that will do is it will bake that information into keyframes for us so hitting U it will display all the keyframes we've got here and here we have all the values for the output of that selection so if we shut sound keys off now and go back to element this is where all the magic happens and you'll see how simple it is to make element 3D sound reactive we're going to scroll down and go to the animation engine and enable it between groups 1 and 2 now all we're going to do is hit U on sound keys so our keyframes are displayed go back to element to the animation engine and alt click well, yeah, alt click on the stopwatch here where it says animation, which controls how it trans changes from X um, group one to group two. Alt click on it and pick whip this value to the sound keys output and then click off. So now what this does is it gets the value from the sound keys and will apply that to the animation percentage of the animation engine in element. So when the value is higher 87 this becomes 87 percent and is you know 87 percent from you know through the animation so that makes the element 3d sound reactive now so if we uh, ram preview back a bit where the waveform gets larger the output value increases therefore the percentage in the animation engine is higher and the box raises out the ground more so if we play it back as you can see it uh, is now animating in time with the music obviously there's no motion blur on there which helps really make the effect look a lot nicer and uh, you can smooth it out and stuff by having the output smaller and then using an expression in element to double it or something like that but um, now what we're going to do is in the original there was a like a dark patch here where it looked like the slab had been come out the floor so that's pretty simple we're gonna make a new solid make it dark but not all the way black click OK make it a 3D layer here and rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees now if we look left this is flatter flatter along the floor here because we normalized our scene and set up now if we scale it down a bit and put it below element and shut both element and the floor off we'll name this floor what we can do is we can get the mask tool and click in each corner of the slab it's not perfect but like I say just for the tutorial sake and then turn it back on and feather it about by 3 pixels or so and now this creates us our nice cutout area here I might expand the mask by one pixel so when we turn element back on it looks like it is actually coming out of the floor sort of thing like that and uh, that is the basics behind it 
it's a pretty simple concept and I'm pretty sure lots of really good things could be made from this technique. Uh, I'm not gonna that's, that's, I'm not gonna go into detail about cleaning the tracks up. It's pretty simple. I just got this texture and uh, you know put it into 3D space and placed it above the the tracking points markers and feathered it out a bit. But um, yeah, I mean I hope this you can use this technique and if you make anything from it, send me the video and it is a video response. Hope you found this tutorial useful. Sorry if I messed up or didn't explain too well, but um, I'll try better next time. Once again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.